Hello everyone, how are you doing today? I'm back with another video and in today's video we have an ASUS VivoBook 15 laptop. This ex exact model for this one is an X512J. That information can be found on the bottom power of the laptop. And in this video I'm gonna go over how you can tear it down, open it up and clean up the fan, the heatsink and repaste the CPU for your laptop. If yours is running hot and it's been a few years and you want to just repay so you can play games better and uh, even the performance for this ones will increase a lot because they are they do use iCore 7 10 gen or they use iCore 5 some of them once the intel cpu heats up a lot it will bring the speed down and that can um, affect the performance you should be doing your repays every few years it's really recommended all right I'm gonna go over the tools that we're gonna be using. And first we're gonna power up the laptop. Doing this will not uh, remove any files, programs, or your system is not gonna to touch anything of that. You're gonna power on, everything's gonna be normal. So you're not gonna lose anything. Power off the laptop, grab yourself a few tools. Tool number one, a toothbrush, used or new. Grab a workshop towel. I'll leave the link for all these products that I use in my video description if you need. A uh, metallic guitar pick, uh, tweezers, you will need uh, isopropolic or isopropolic alcohol. You need a thermal paste. You can go with an Arctic MX4 or MX5, the new one, or you can go crazy a little bit and go with the Thermal Grizzly Cryonaut. But really, is over done with this one is like a, don't go with that one go with arctic mx4 or mx5 that's more than enough you will need uh the main tool which is an i screwdriver set i'll use the ifix screwdriver set they have one of the best bits out there we're going to be using a uh, phillips number one these are s2 class steel that's that's why i like these ones they will last you a long time if you get the pro set it will include you with an opening tools and some tweezers if not, grab the basic set. Uh, for the opening tools, we're going to be using a guitar pick. Uh, metallic guitar picks are really suitable to opening cases and covers. With these tools on hand, we're going to proceed with opening the, of the laptop. Uh, right on the bottom case, you can see a whole bunch of screws. There's a three types of screws in here. The single long screw, the medium ones, and the short ones. The long one, if the front of the laptop is facing you, the long single long screw is the top left side. So you want to remove this one and you want to keep it in one pile. This is long by one millimeter only. And the short ones are the mid row and the top right and top mid. Next, we're going to remove the short ones and make sure you keep these screws in a separate pile so you don't mismatch them. Also, if you guys like my videos, if my videos are helping you guys to do your own cleaning, servicing, upgrading, and you want to support the channel you can do that by clicking the like and subscribe i greatly appreciate it will be a great motivation for me to make more videos take requests and answer your questions in the comment area I appreciate that all right once we remove all the screws and i see sometimes that the long screws is only in the middle so you gotta see where is yours let me know in the video comment if yours is in here or the long screw is in the middle so i seen them in few places once i got i saw them in the middle and once i saw it in the top left side so i wonder where where it's supposed to be because nobody opened this laptop before it, it was brand new so and i opened two brand news and the screw positions were different anyway so once you remove the screws you want to Grab your opening tool and you want to stick it between the top and the bottom cover right there. And you want to twist it backward. You want to hear a big click. That's what you want to hear. Those are the clips that are getting loose. You want to do that all the way to the front corner. Do that the front side of the laptop. Same thing. I'm just sticking it right there. Twisting it towards the screen. It's really straight and forward. Do the left and right side all the way to the back corner and there we have it now in here you want to grab it from the front end of the cover and you want to lift it up and you want to wiggle around while you're lifting up and it will release the back end 
This is the bottom cover. You can grab a little toothbrush and towel and clean up on the bottom cover right here. All right, down here you're gonna see the whole fan, the heat pipe and the CPU right there, the RAM, the SSD drive, mechanical drive, the battery, the Wi-Fi board, and the speakers. Before we proceed any further, we're gonna remove the battery. To remove the battery, we gotta remove this bracket right here. So go ahead and remove the two chrome screw and one single black screw right here. So once we remove this one, we're gonna lift up the bracket, put it to one side. I seen again on the assembly line, they do have two different types. This cables for the battery is over this flex cable. Sometimes it's underneath. So if it's underneath, you have to unhook this flex cable, lift it up and pull it out. So you can remove these uh, cables right here. And you wanna lift up the cables a little bit up right here. In this position, you have to like pile them up. To remove the jack here, you have to unhook it. You want to use a plastic guitar pick. You want to push this metal backward and it's going to clear the white plastic. And then you want to grab the guitar pick, place it right under the jack. And then you just want to push it down towards the battery here. And it will open up this jack right there. Now, once we did this one, you can go ahead and once place this flex cable right under so remove this flex cable put it under these cables and put it right in there and lock it down now we're going to remove the heat sink and the fan the fan the flex cable for the lcd goes over the fan and right there so we need to separate them there's a little foam adhesive right in here we might have to rip that apart First, let's go ahead and remove the four screws for the heatsink. Remove four of them. And now we can, there's no GPU in here installed. If your version has a GPU, you have to remove the two screws for the GPU plate here and lift up. So I'm gonna lift up from here and bring up the heatsink up right here. And you can see the thermal paste and everything right there. Now, there's a two way of cleaning the fan. You can clean the fan right there. Just use a toothbrush, clean it, and blow some air through here and everything will come from this side out. There's a big opening right there. Or if you want to remove the fan, there's a three screws. You have to remove this. It has a little adhesive, gently bring it on top. And remove the three screw that touches the fan. And you can lift up the fan. Be careful with this cable. You don't want to pull on the cables. You're going to damage the cable. For the jack, what you want to do, you want to put your fingernails right by the jack right there and pull the black jack backward. Wiggle around and it will release itself. Don't pull on the cable for the... Whatever you do, do not pull on the cable. Otherwise, you're going to rip the cables. So there's the fan. You can take it outside, blow some dry air, compressed air right through here and clean it up. All right, this one is pretty clean. And once you clean it up, bring it and put it, set it down. You slide the jack right in place. So bring it. And jack ink was only one way in. So push it all the way in. I'm gonna use two fingers, push it from the side to side. It goes all the way in. Put the three screws for the fan. Now put this flex cable right over right there now we're going to clean up this cpu first we're going to grab one corner of this workshop towel we're going to soak it in an alcohol make sure it's 90 percent plus otherwise it's bad and we're going to clean up the cpu there's no capacitors on these cpus so safely go ahead and rub over and remove the excess of thermal paste and clean it up nicely once you clean it up do it with a dry part, make sure it's nice and shiny. There's no dust particles, anything on top. Now we're gonna clean up this thermo in the heat sink. So you're gonna just rub it and remove the excess of thermal paste. And I'm gonna fold this inside. It doesn't spill out. 
grab the new site and just polish that and clean it up. And there we have it. I don't like this time up in this heat sink and also go ahead with a toothbrush, clean up the extra dust in here and blow some air through here. This is very clean. The reason I don't like this heat sink because they use a different metal and for the heat transfer, this metal is not good. The copper is one of the best heat transfer. So they, I don't know why they use a different metal. It's not even aluminum and soldered on the copper. So that's not a great heat transfer right there. But we can't do anything about it. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna grab a one drop of thermal paste on the middle die and one drop on the secondary die, right there. Next, you wanna grab the heat sink, align this side in, make sure it goes right under the cable, everything nice in there. Bring it on, set it down and do not lift it up again. And you wanna uh, cross screw the screws on the heat sink. There's a number one, two, three, four, or you can do two, one, three, four. As long as you cross and screw them, you're fine. So I'm actually gonna follow the number for this time. So there we have it. Do that three and four. And do a second pass. Make sure they're really nice and tight. There we go. Once you got the heat sink in there, the fan is connected, double check the fan. We're gonna get the connector for the battery. We are gonna push the lock back, align it straight over, make sure it's really nice and aligned and push it toward the motherboard. And once you have it in there, just slide the metal over by one millimeter. Once you have that one in place, You wanna grab the metal bracket, set it right on top, put the two chrome screw and one black screw right in here. The chrome screw goes inside the bracket. The black one goes right in the corner, almost to the outside. Once you have that in there, next step would be to just grab the bottom cover, put it straight on top, and you want to push the corners in and you want to hear a, a few clicks. That's what you want to hear in the back. And there's a clip in the middle, just gently press on it and the sides. And when you open it and you're going to see an opening right here, you just want to pinch the top and bottom cover together, side to side to the corner and make sure all is locked in and ready to go. I'm going to place the longer screw in the middle this time and see if it goes in. I'm not forcing it and it goes nicely. I'm going to put the short one medium one in this side it does go well so i'm guessing the long screw is supposed to be in the middle but i don't know why i see it a few times on the left side yeah but yeah but if yours is in here feel free to put it wherever you removed it from again i'm guessing the assembly line every time they put it in different places is long by one millimeter is not long and uh, like humongous so it's not actually going to go through Anyways, I'm gonna power the laptop on and then I'm gonna finish up putting the front end screw. When you power on the laptop, because we remove the battery, it might take up to 10 to 15 seconds for the screen to show. So don't panic, I'm gonna power on and I'm not gonna fast forward this part so you guys can see. So let's start, one, two, three. There we go, we powered on. There was a flicker in the screen, so I know that there is a reaction. Now we're gonna count probably five to 10 seconds or probably 15 seconds for the motherboard to reset itself and it should boot and it should go to the windows with no problem. So people usually panic after five seconds. Don't panic, just wait, be patient and it will work. Let's see. Let's wait a little longer and we should see the, the ASUS logo. This one probably took 15 seconds and there we have it. And the flicker on the on the LCD, I don't see that by my naked eye, and you won't neither because my camera is a 60 FPS camera. It's picking up the refresh rate, which is this one is a brief 50 or I don't know, it's a low quality F LCD. All right, and there we have it. If you have any question or request, feel free to leave them in a video comment. I'll try to answer them as soon as I can. As always, thanks for watching, and I hope to see you guys in my next video.
just gonna finish up putting up the front end of this screw.